Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it is time for you to bring you I think episode number 6 of our MotoGP 15 career mode walkthrough. Now I realise it's been a little bit of time since the last one of these so I do apologise for that but nevertheless we are back here after our race at Assen last time where we managed to take 4th on the final corner. We are here and we are back in action. Now I am slightly ill, you might be able to hear that in my voice so... I do apologise for that, for A, for sounding ill, and also for the fact I had a sore throat uh, last three days, so uh, unfortunately I haven't been able to upload as much as I would have liked. Uh, nevertheless, we are now heading off for round number nine at the Saxon Ring, which is in Germany, another of the classic tracks. We've had, uh, we've had Assen, we've had Mugello, we've had Le Mans in previous episodes or in recent episodes, and now we go to another classic which is the Saxon Ring. There you can see our previous results so far in this series, and again, our teammates Banyaya Guevara and Jorge Martin. Off, obviously, we are now fresh off the back of a fourth place in Assen, which has promoted us to ninth place in the championship. Anyway then, we are gonna start off this race at the Saxon Ring in Germany, 25% length, all the usual good stuff. There you can see the race options. Now one thing I've gotta say is thank you massively for the support so far on this series. It's actually been really cool. Because I'm the MotoGP before, I wasn't expecting it to get mad amounts of attention. Um, and in comparison to F1, it gets less views and stuff, but it's still, the support and the comments and stuff are really positive uh, every episode. In fact, someone said, this was honestly my favourite comment of the year so far, of 2016. I know you're not DJ Khaled, but I want another one and another one, and that just brightened my day completely. Nevertheless, right. Um, it's overcast for a start. Nevertheless, bike development time again. We've got another data pack, and as I said before, we're going to try and evenly distribute it amongst everything. So we're going to use it on the brakes this time. We are going to head off to the track here at a very, very cloudy Saxon ring, and some. Uh, what has happened here? What has happened here? Why am I not seeing the grid? Why am I seeing the inside of a very bland pit wall? Nevertheless, 34 bikes are about to get underway here under gloomy skies at the Saxon Ring. The seven lap race is underway and it seems like a pretty decent start in comparison to Carrasco and Rodrigo and Herrera who once again are on the row in front of us. That's why I'll be uh, doing qualifying next time but obviously not taking part. Down into turn one, it's a pretty tight turn one, but it seems as if everyone's made it through pretty well. We've made about six positions there, going around the outside of Danilo. Uh, we've now got Minho in front of us as well. I've tried to improve my riding style a little bit as well, so it's a little bit less, um, like, like as if a little bit more smooth, basically, is what I'm trying to say. A little bit more smooth, so I'm not just tapping on the... The, uh, the analog stick constantly. We've got at the inside though there of Minho and Remy Gardner, but our teammate Jorge Martin just completely decided to park on the apex, so that slowed us down quite a bit. Uh, just as a bit of background, we've obviously got to try and keep up our record of beating our last result in every single race, and to do that we've got to finish on the podium in this race. We're currently 24th on this first lap of the race. Uh, next up is Ono and Manzi, a little bit too deep into there, but Ono goes even further wide, so we got the inside of him. And now the waterfall, I think it's called. The downhill right-hander, which is just one of the best corners on the entire calendar. We're going to try and lunge up the inside here of Manzi as well. The Italian, and we make that move stick pretty nicely. Oh, no, but we've hit Cornfile. I don't actually know how that happened. Anyway, we're going to try and make a slightly cleaner move on Cornfile here and go up the inside. Leg dangles out. We've got Nicky Io and Livio Loy in front of us, and we go past them. Uh, now it's two of our teammates, Banyaya and Guevara. Guevara's having a good race, but he's leaning on Ertel. We're going to get in the slipstream and see if we can pass all three of these guys down into turn one. We've earned uh, another data pack. Are we going to make it up the inside? There we go, a little bit deep. There's been a massive accident. Absolutely huge accident. Down into turn one, about six riders, literally. Bastianini, Vazquez went down. Uh, we've got some... What in the world has just happened there? My oh my, well we're up into 13th, we've literally just gained 5 positions I think, or 4, something like that. Bastianini went down, Vasquez went down, there were a few other riders that went down in front that we haven't actually passed here. I think Danny Kent was one of them. What in the world just happened? Well we're 13th, Matteo Ferrari's got a flipping nosebleed up in 12th here, but we're going up the inside of him on that San Carlo bike. And on lap two, we're already into flipping 12th place. This is fantastic. Someone's gone massively wide there in front. That's Miguel Oliveira, who's clearly gone down as well. 
because he's way down in ninth. We're stuffing it up the inside of Fanati through the waterfall section. He's just flipping hit us and got a wheelie on. Not suggested, Fanati. You do not do wheelies down the waterfall section. Whatever the circumstance behind us, it looks as if Efren Vazquez is trying to make a move on Matteo Ferrari, but it seems as if his bike is quite damaged. I've got damage on heavy. Locatelli's just lost it completely on exit the final corner. What is going on in this Grand Prix? Quattararo has got a flipping Googleplex lead down into turn one. Literally, I think I think Kent and Oliveira both fell off, and hence he's literally got a flipping Apollo seismic gap at the front of the of the field. We're tenth though. McPhee and Oliveira going massively wide there on the corner before the waterfall, and down the hill we're going to try and get past both of them, which will give us eighth place. We haven't actually made a position yet on this lap. We try and get around the outside here, down into this left hander. We can and do comfortably, actually, though we go a little bit wide. We'll hold on to the position. So then next up, Danny Kent, who's alongside uh, Navarro. Vinales and Mazbu up on the podium. You know it's just one of them races when Vinales and Mazbu. Kent's gone down again. Danny Kent has fallen off twice in a race, but we had to go round the outside of the Brit, and it's allowed Oliveira up the inside, so we've taken him back off the IO bike, and well now he's gone back up the inside, lovely battling between ourselves and the Portuguese rider. We've actually not, what I've noticed, we haven't actually got that much pace, in all honesty. We haven't actually got, I don't think, the pace to get on the podium here. We've got to pass four more riders, I can see them all. And we've got, what, three and a half laps to do it? Well, maybe. We've got Navarro here. And up the road, I think, is Binder or Hanukkah. One of the IO bikes. Anyway, we're going around the outside of Navarro. That's a pretty decent move. Through we go. That's Binder. And, oh, God, we've got well out of shape there. Binder and Hanukkah are up the road. Oh, lovely exit out of the final corner. We should have the slipstream here on both of them. Binder and Hanukkah alongside each other going towards the line. But in front of us, the main battle that we've got to try and get to is Mazbu and Vinales, who are battling for the... Oh, Hanukkah! Jesus Christ! How on earth did Hanukkah stay on his bike there? That is honestly beyond me. We've gone wide, though, through that right-hander. We do hold on to the position, though. And suddenly, we're, we're equaling now our best result. Kai Rudin's dropped it from last place. Or second last place, actually, sorry. Vinales and Mazbu currently on the flipping podium. What? <laughs> this is just, just amazing scenes. We're right with the Husqvarna rider now. I can't believe Mazbu and Vinales are beating Binder and Hanukkah on pace, but they are, whatever the circumstances. Quattararo is in, an, is in another flipping zip code at the moment. He's literally so far ahead, it's beyond a joke. Vinales has gone wide here, and he's just shoving us out wide. What battling this is. What a race this has been. We've been sat up twice in one corner by Vinales. And now we're going to try and... I don't know. We're just... I don't know. I don't even know what the plan is anymore. Because everyone's just falling off. Left, right and centre. Literally... Oh, we've gone wide. We've gone massively wide there. Vinales has backed it into turn one. An absolute treat here onto the penultimate lap. But he's taken the position back. As Vinales goes through again, but then goes wide. But then we go wide, and now mazbu has gone through again. Oh, God, I'm so ill, but this is fantastic. Mazbu's sitting us up now. He's got a shocker of an exit, like Locatelli did from earlier. I wonder if there's any random point scorers, because there's been so many people hitting the deck that surely someone out of the ordinary is scoring a point in this one. Vinales, Vinales has gone way too deep into turn one. But he's taken the position and we've fallen off. We've fallen off. Right, we had to use a flashback, but we've now got a half a second penalty. For what, I'm not entirely sure. But we are going to literally have to steam around this final lap. Like our actual life depends on it here. And we are doing so. Everyone goes wide through that corner. So we take the position off Mazbu. We're going to have to do a heck of a lot more here, though, to, uh, to actually take the podium. I don't know if this is going to be enough, in all honesty. It may not be, but we will try. We will try and hope. Please, God, let that be a half-second gap back to Mazbu. Please, mother of God, let it be. It is. We went onto the grass because I was looking backwards. I don't know why I did that. I'm so sorry. My driving ability, riding ability, sorry, is extremely bad. 
We did! We held on to the position. Yes, get in there. Excusing my shocking riding standards. There at the end of the race, here is the result. Quattararo wins. We take second place. I don't know if that's, that can't be with the penalty. There's no way Vinales was over five tenths back from us. Uh, but I think I think we'll be dropped down to third. Um, but then Mazbu's definitely fourth. So sorry about that, Mazbu. You're not getting on the podium. Uh, but Binder fifth. Hanukkah sixth. Oliveira seventh. Navarro eighth. McPhee ninth. Then Fanati, Vazquez, Kent recovered to 12th, to be fair. And uh, oh, there were no unusual point scorers, which is slightly depressing after a race like that. Bastianini only 15th behind Locatelli and Antonelli. Uh, but Ertel 16th, agonizingly close to points. Banyaya struggled, he was down in 21st. Ono, after falling off, was 22nd. Um, but yeah, wow, what, what a race that was. And the only retirement was Stefano Manzi. Whatever the circumstance, Quattararo now leads... You wouldn't have thought that two episodes ago. Quattararo now leads the championship. Not only leads it, but by 32 points from Kent. And it's Oliveira, Vazquez in fourth, but after a shocking race, Binder's caught him slightly. And it's Hanukkah, Navarro, Vinales in eighth, uh, but he's only now one point behind Navarro and seven behind Hanukkah. Then it's us still in ninth somehow. Mazbu tenth. Bastianini 11th, and Antonelli, McPhee's passed Fanati, and then there's the rest of the order. But wh wow, what a race that was. What a race. There we are on the podium in third place because we got demoted. Sorry, I'm drinking water. We got demoted uh, because of the penalty. So Isaac Vinales ended up coming second. Um, but we take third, and we have ended up on the podium. Quattararo. Is pro he, Quattararo is going to need counselling. He was on his own for so long in that Grand Prix. But whatever the circumstance, he wins. Vinales is second after we get demoted from the penalty. But we do take our place in Park Ferme with third place. And our first podium of this series. So we have to come second or above to beat our previous result in this one. Anyway, race options. We're now going to have qualifying on. Uh, yeah, qualifying, qualifying and race, okay, but I'm not going to take part in qualifying. And we'll see whether that changes, um, you know, the order a bit. If it doesn't really have much of an effect after sort of two, three episodes, then we'll probably change it back, but it might as well. It, it's not really any hardship for myself. So then, Indianapolis, a track I know pretty well from Formula One in general, but a track layout that I know from Grid Autosport. As you can see, we've now applied two data packs to the brakes, and two data packs to the chassis. However, we've only got one data pack on the suspension. Therefore, we're going to go ahead and uh, make everything even. So far, I'm not seeing anything massive. Jorge Navarro, well, Jorge Navarro was second. Uh, anything massively different down here? Not really, in all honesty. I'm not going to lie to you. This looks pretty much like the grid you'd get if it was auto-completed. But let's see. Uh, there you can see qualifying. And in all honesty, the order is pretty much exactly the same as you'd get if you skipped qualifying in the first place. In fact, I think it's even more bog standard than it would have been before. Anyway, it's, it's the effort that counts. To be fair, I thought that would work. I thought you'd get much more um, uh, messed up grid than we did end up with, but whatever the circumstances. Brad Binder, I suppose you could say a bit of a disappointing quality session for him down in 11th place. He probably would have been hoping to capitalise a little bit more, actually, on the all the crashes that happen in the Saxon ring. So I think him and Hanukkah will be pretty disappointed they didn't get a podium out of that. Nevertheless, we are here for the six-lap race around Indianapolis, and we are underway. The usual poor start for Rodrigo. There's a Husqvarna there, slightly detached from everyone else, down towards turn one, and people are flying in left, right, and centre. Darren Binder's just been biffed by ourselves. Tanucci and Kairudin getting a little bit friendly. A little bit um, close for comfort there. A lot of riders in the field as we get very close for comfort with Herrera. And uh, But we've survived and everyone else has survived as well. So we're in 26. That's, that's a solid eight positions gained then through the first few corners. Uh, we seem to be quicker here than Herrera. We're going to try and duck to the inside. A bit of a biff there for her. Oh my word. We'll get a little bit too tight there because... People didn't see that I was coming. Whatever the circumstances, we're going to go around the outside here. Cornfile. And uh, Martin. Someone had a massive moment in front of us. I think that was Guevara, yeah. Had a good exit, though, out of that corner. We're alongside Ertel. We've got Guevara in front of us. Going to try and get in the slipstream 
of the Spaniard, and we do that and then go round the outside. Very cautious on the brakes, actually, with those two. We've taken 21st then. A reminder, we have got to finish second or above to beat our record of, of, of um, beating our previous results in every race. This has been a very good first lap, it has to be said. Already up into 19th place here. Trying to be a bit smoother, but it's not exactly working a treat so far. We've got Mino though, here. That we're going to try and lunge up the inside of. That was a bit uh, feisty, it has to be said. But we make the move stick in the end. Is well, no idea. We've got past Ferrari. I don't know what my... There. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what my mouth just did, but we're trying to get past Ferrari here. The issue with the AI on this game is they just don't... They don't really see you coming. So if you're up the inside, they'll just continue to turn into you. So it makes it look as if I'm making really haphazard moves up the inside, but when in actual fact, it's just the AI turning in on me constantly. Whatever the circumstance, we're going to try and go round the outside here of Fanati. Have we got that job done? Ish, sort of. We do stuff it up the inside, though. Our progress has been stunted slightly on this lap. I, I really do genuinely think that second or above is 100% out of the question. Uh, sorry, the only reason we got third in Sa the Saxon ring was because Oliveira, Kent, and um, Vazquez all fell off. Um, and I don't see that happening in this one, and I don't see us working our way through the order quick enough to be able to take the positions outright. We have, however, got past McPhee and Locatelli there on exit. Next up the road, though, is Antonelli. In front of him is another Italian. That's Bastianini. Uh, then I think it's Mazbu and potentially Hanukkah. We just biffed Antonelli out of the way. I really am sorry. Uh, oh, God, the AI are very slow through there. We're going to try and get round the outside of Bastianini. Can we pull that one off? We can. We're catching Hanukkah and Mazbu fairly well, although Quattararo is actually just past Navarro, so Navarro is in that gaggle in front as well. Whatever the circumstances, we've gone past uh, two riders there. That was Mazbu and uh, Hanukkah. Uh, we are right with the gaggle that's battling for third, of course, but we can't really get through the, the battle. We've, um, we've obviously, you know, we can see third very clearly, but we can't really actually get there as of yet. Very quick through that left-hander. Can we make a move up the inside there on Vinales? We can. Just about get up the inside. Vazquez, get out of the damn way, man. Jesus Christ. Anyway, looks like we've got a better exit, though, out of the corner than the Leopard rider. But we're, of course, still a lot slower in a straight line than the Hondas. And as you can see, without slipstream, Vazquez goes straight back through. I do apologise, Efren. But we really need to get past you, I'm afraid, if we want to get another podium. Which, in all honesty, I don't think is going to happen. But uh, we, we can at least dream. We get well up on the curb, but do get past Vazquez there, finally. Right, next up is Navarro, then it's Quattararo. Can we do this? I reckon we're strong enough through a good three corners to make these overtakes here. So I reckon we can do this. I'm going to try and get around the... Right, so that's one position gained. Around the outside of Navarro. We're not going to beat our best result so far. Um, we can equal it, but we're not going to beat it, certainly. Anyway, this could be another last lap manoeuvre here on uh, Fabio Quattararo. And I think it's going to be. Let's, let's be real here. Oh, God. I look behind. I look behind and I started coughing. Just stay calm. Just stay calm and composed, all right? Stop being ill and giving your illness to people across the internet, Niran, and just focus. We have focused. We've gone through the final corners without any hitch at all. And we're going to come across the line, hopefully, here. To take third place, Oliveira wins from Danny Kent, but we come across the line to take yet another podium in this one. It's third place. We take third, Danny Kent second by only a third of a tenth, if that makes any sense, uh, from Oliveira. We take third, though, Quattararo fourth, then Navarro, uh, Vazquez, Binder, Vinales, and Hanaka. And then rounding out the top ten was Mazbu. Bastianini was 11th from Antonelli, McPhee, Locatelli, and Fanati. Rounding out the top 15. And then the pretty standard order behind that, as you can see. Here is how the table, though, has been affected by that one. Quattararo's lead at the top of the table has been cut substantially after he could only take third, whilst Kent... Well, well not substantially, actually, because Kent was only second. Oliveira, though, won the race, which makes it slightly closer between the top three. Vazquez is pretty cut adrift in fourth. Uh, but it's quite close between Binder in fifth and ourselves in ninth. Only 23 points covering Binder, Hanukkah, Navarro, Vinales and ourselves, and it's Mazbu in 10th, Bastianini um, in 11th, or Bastianini in 11th, then Antonelli 12th, McPhee, Fanati, Locatelli, Ono, and Bagnaia, still, still the only point scorers in this series so far. Feels a bit like deja vu, doesn't it, in, uh, in the box again, though we were actually on the other side um, last time, 
uh, for some reason, but we, I think that's because we had the penalty. But this time, we are actually registered as third in Park Ferme, and we've taken a fairly well-earned third, because I, I had no faith whatsoever halfway through the race we were going to take another podium. But Oliveira winning the race from Danny Kent, Quattararo nowhere to be seen, really, in terms of the, uh, the lead battle, and uh, we capitalise upon that and take third place. The day that I was expecting has finally come. It is time to either stay in our current team or choose another one. Uh, we've got multiple Moto2 rides, a lot, of, a lot of Moto2 rides. The team that um, Sam Lowe's rides for, which is very interesting. That's very early to be getting such an amazing Moto2 offer. Um, so we've got some good offers there in Moto2, but in all honesty, I don't really want to jump up to Moto2 uh, quite yet. It might be that we um, we do the jump from Moto2. To, uh, to, Mo to MotoGP halfway through the season, but I don't particularly want to do that now. I've always dreamed of being sponsored by Red Bull. That's a lie, I haven't. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. But I, it would seem as though really being sponsored by Red Bull is probably the coolest out of all these options. Uh, we're not going to make the jump randomly down to Altox Reset Drink Team. We are going to rock and roll with Red Bull KTM, because I think the general consensus is we can probably but maybe even make a late comeback and win the title. With a team like that, we can certainly go from, you know, to actually winning uh, winning races with that anyway, even from the back of the grid. And we're going to sign with Red Bull KTM IO. I apologise to anyone if that's offended anyone, um, but in all honesty, I think it needs to be done because then at least we can, you know, we can really properly challenge for the Moto3 Championship. Nevertheless, I think that's going to round up today's episode of MotoGP Career Mode Walkthrough. This has been episode number six. I hope you have enjoyed, despite me being fairly ill. Uh, feel free to hit the like button if you did enjoy the video, and subscribe if you are new around here as well. For more of this, for F1 content, and of course the new Grid 1, the original Race Driver Grid series that I started a few days ago as well. But nevertheless, it has been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. You are the